Welcome in to Player Section here on Southeastern 14. I'm Blaine Gilmer. That's Noshawn Marino. We'll have yeah. Tavares King here with us in a minute. What's up, Noshawn? How you doing, my man? Can't complain. Can't complain. How you been, man? How's everything? I'm doing great. Doing great. I had the old pumpkin fest deal. We had a little little kid thing at the church. Had to go do the trunk or treat type thing yeah. tonight. You know, hitting all that up. What What about you? You got big Halloween Halloween plans out there? What's going on? You gotta do the trunk or treat. Um, I don't have anything too crazy going on, but I know we'll go to like a little pumpkin patch or something like that, or one of those. Uh, they usually have something at this this farm right down the block. They have all the animals out and stuff like that. I got the funnel cakes. So, you know, we got to go down there and check that out. This is a fun time of the year. You know what I mean? Get to dress up a little bit and get those pumpkins carved, man. You pump car- you, you do the uh, pumpkin carving? We do a little bit. We do a little bit of it. We're not what I would call experts or anything, but uh, what we are experts at and what we're going to be experts at throughout the evening is talking a little SEC football. And when we talk about fall and we talk about uh, pumpkin patches and Halloween, it's always around this week, hate week, Georgia, Florida, <laughs> Uh, a rivalry like no other out there, no, Sean. I mean, just it's it's great, the the history that is out there, and you actually played in it. So did TK. TK will be on here with a minute, in a minute talking about that. But just from before we get into the playing days of it, what is it like now that you're on the other side and you, you know, get ready for this this week ever, ever since you left Georgia? Yeah, man, it was fun, especially when you get to the league, man. It's always going to be a guy in that locker room. That's uh that played for you know an SEC team either that's you know Wesley Woodyard with, with Kentucky or is it all those Florida boys that I play with you know what I mean so um, especially this game you know they always have something to say especially the Florida players that played uh, at, jo- at at Florida in the past right so um you know you got to put some something on it I'm like yo all that talk let's put a little something on this you know what I'm saying so that's fun at least. Um, getting that camaraderie in the locker room, just watching your former team play and, you know, hopefully they go out there and win that thing. But it, it's a fun time. And then now that, you know, I'm not in the league anymore, I mean, it's still the same thing. You know, we still got Instagram and all those things. I still hit up a couple of the fellas. Uh, I hit up the Pouncy Boys. Like, yo, you know, you already know what week it is. So um, it, it's definitely a good time, especially in this big, this big rivalry game. Absolutely, absolutely. We've got a lot of people already in here with us. We got Charles in here. Now, now listen, no, Sean, Charles is a big Missouri fan. He was on here, he's been on here a couple of times, but he's gonna actually come on with us here in a minute. So, Charles, I know you're watching. I I know you say you're right here. We're gonna bring you on here in just a little bit. We'll drop the link in the in the uh comments here in just a minute before we get to a couple of things. Um, but wanted to make sure that everybody knows, hey, we're growing fast over here at Southeastern 14. Always, as always, looking for uh, advertising partners, things like that. If you think your company, your clientele is would fit good with SEC craze fan base, this is the place for you. Hit up caroline.smith at southeastern14.com. Yeah, be, man, be a little, be a little, be a little. Bit, I was excited know, to drink that, John. A little cleaner with that thing. Oh, my goodness, man. I'm excited yeah. about this week, man. Yeah, but hit up caroline.smith at southeastern14.com. You can check out in the description a discount on Chomp. So we'll get to all those in just a minute. So uh, before we go too much further, you know, we talk about hate week, and I know there is a lot of that, like in terms of, man, you really badly want to beat that other school. But also there's got to be an element, especially in the era that you played, with some of those guys that you played against over there, there's got to be a whole lot of respect for the type of athletes that you're going up against in that matchup year in and year out. Oh, for sure. Especially the time when I was playing. I mean, even now, but back then, man, they had so many players, major, right? The Pouncy boys, you know, Tebow, of course, um, Percy, Spikes, wouldn't he? Spikes, Percy. I mean, these are all guys that got a chance to go to the league, you know what I mean? And did well in the league. Right. So, um, I didn't know too much about this rivalry or any rivalry at all, honestly, coming from uh, New Jersey down to Georgia, right? Um, so kind of, kind of, I guess it kind of caught me off surprise by surprise uh, of how intense this rivalry is in particular. Like you said, you mentioned a, a lot of SEC games, a lot of the teams that we play are rivalry games. I mean, you can go down the list, Tennessee, Auburn, blah, 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 blah right? But this one right here just got a little something, something to it. I mean, we're talking about, Georgia, Florida split, split down the middle. And, you know what I mean? Like, I've never seen anything like that before. And um, the atmosphere there, getting you know, going across the bridge and seeing all the tailgaters and seeing all the um, the trailers lined up with, guys, with, with people tailgating, right? I mean, 
just the atmosphere itself. That's what I noticed the most about this game is just the atmosphere. And then you go into that game, it doesn't matter what the, the records are. Um, I feel like these two teams go at it in this particular game. Well, speaking of going at it, we're going to go ahead and drop the link right here in the in the description. So Charles wants to come on, and he wants to make his case for Missouri. He's already looking ahead. You know, Missouri's on the bye week this week. They're getting to rest up for, for Georgia. So he's wanting to go ahead and look ahead. I promised Charles he could come on, so we're going to let Charles come on here or waiting on TK. Uh, so, Charles, I just dropped that link there in the, in the comments. So uh, just put that in there, and you should be able to come on, and we'll bring you on here in just a minute. So uh, while, he, while he's doing that, Where's Charles then? Oh, didn't didn't take long. Here. Didn't take long. Here, here's Charles right here. Let me get the uh, the screen right the way we need it. Hold on just one second. One second. Uh, there, player section. Bring old Charles on. Charles Conway, <laughs> Missouri fan extraordinaire. So, Charles, welcome in to player section, man. How y'all doing tonight? What y'all got going on? Oh man, we're just uh, talk. We're we're gonna talk a little hate week, but I promised you last week you'd come on. Now I want you to know, Charles, before you start talking to No Sean, he has been a big Missouri <laughs> proponent, and also I picked Missouri to go nine and three this year before the season ever started. In well, my, since in when? My, Hold on, now you never told oh, us in, that in our preview predictions out here on the channel. It's out there, Charles. Seen it, Charles? I'll see am you I, am on I, it. I see yeah. both of y'all uh, talking. Good He's about seen it. We've both no been lie. we've both been high on Missouri. I picked Kentucky to go ten and two, so they got to win out to, to hit that prediction, though. So, so they got to win out. So I was a little wrong on them, but Charles, go ahead and share your thoughts. I know you wanted to talk for a couple of weeks now about Missouri. So, what is your reasoning? And then I'll let No Sean respond to it. Why you think that Missouri? I know they're coming off bye week. Can go into Athens and beat the back to back defending national champions mm. in a couple of weeks. You know. Well, I'll start with the fact that that's a very tall task, and I fully acknowledge that. I also acknowledge the fact that as a Mizzou fan, you know, where we stand amongst the nation is not, you know, at the top, top. But I think the big issue with many of the comments that I brought to the page has been the fact that they try to put us at the bottom, bottom. And I'm just like, you know, we may not be top, top, but we not bottom, bottom. And as it specifically relates to, you know, the Georgia matchup, which I know is, hey, we, you know, us, Mizzou, we on a buy, so we don't have nothing to think about but Georgia, so I hate to just jump to that. But, you know, nonetheless, that's the topic at hand. You know, when I look at things, you know, I look at it from a scope of how our team is built. That's the biggest key to it to me. You know, the team is built off seniors. You got, you know, yeah. you had 18 returning starters, but you had nine seniors on defense. So, you know, something like that is unheard of in this, you know, era where a lot of guys are leaving, moving around and whatnot. And so, you know, defense travels. I think we all could agree with that, that defense usually travels more than offense, given the noise and all of that for them. But defense travels. And as it relates to Mizzou, they don't necessarily have – I don't think we have a collection on defense that makes you say elite, but I think we have a bunch of elite spots – and, you know, a bunch of capable guys with those elite spots that combine to make that defense serviceable, you know, where they can do enough to where they can bother, you know, the opponents. And as we specifically speak on Georgia, we know the elephant in the room. We know Brock Bowers. He's the man. It's just that simple. Anybody who says otherwise is just not being real. And, you know, losing anybody, I think, personally, you lose your best player, regardless of who you are, that's a void. But then when you compound that with the fact that it hasn't been the smoothest for Georgia, they've been getting the job done. So if you get the job done, everybody's happy. You pay the bills, hey, how you did it is how you did it. So they've been getting it done, but it was, you know, a little bit more shakier than we used to seeing. So I just think when you combine that, you know, I seen you blame a lot saying the transitive property. And that's really the big thing that led me to want to get on because I have been in the comments throwing out, you know, 26, 22 last year. And, you know, you said, you know, the transitive property, you can't just say, oh, it was 26, 22 last year. So that now means this. No, but you can kind of piece things together with a football game. You say, okay, they kind of challenged them last year. That last year, Georgia team, I mean, I think we should all agree that they like years better than this one. Like, they still solid. Don't get me wrong. They are very solid still. But 
the defense last year, all those studs, you know, the offense, I think it's kind of similar, but you still have some pieces there too that left that were good. So I think you mix that in, you mix in the seniors that we have, you know, the fact that they were in the game last year against Georgia. They were there. Most of these guys played. So they saw what that beast was like. And these are the national champions. So you know how that got to make you feel when you, you haven't played the best, but you know I challenge the guys that beat everybody. So when you mix that in with the fact that, you know, 7-1 and one is good, one to be 8-0, 7-1, and one, you know, I just think it's that right time. And when you mix in the injury, the way the team is built, the record, and the bye week bigger than anything, the bye week, because – I, I, a lot of the Mizzou games, people will say, like, you beat Middle Tennessee barely. You did, you know, but we have not been healthy as well. And we're not so loaded that we just can overcome injuries to a guy. Like, one injury for us is huge. So we'll finally be healthy. So I think that whole perfect storm is why you got a big chance here. Now, I want to say last, last thing I'm going to say. Like, real quick, because I'm going to let Sean get, get his spot then. We're, real quick, what do you got? Last thing I'm going to say is my preseason prediction was 9-3 and three with losses to LSU, Georgia, and Tennessee. So I'm not a guy that just jumps off my preseason and all is up. But I think as we stand now, we have a good shot. No, Sean, it's your, your, the floor is yours to Charles. <laughs> no, I like it, Charles. Yeah. I appreciate it. That was, that was nice. I mean, you said a lot of things that I was saying, um, especially last year when it came – because they were all juniors last year. And I was like, damn, it's hella juniors on the defense. I'm like, bro. They're going to be all right, you feel me? And we saw them last year, Missouri. They played really well. Um, and you 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 made some good th- uh, comments about Georgia and about, you know, missing a lot of players. But like you said, man, you get one injury to Missouri and, and it could be over. I mean, we, we kind of got a nice depth chart and a ni- depth at each position at Georgia, right? So I don't I, I know it's a lot of talk about Browers, um, and he's a – a significant player that we're losing, but there's a lot of guys behind them. I think it's going to get the job done and we can do other things. Right. So I'm not really looking too much into that, but no, you're right. Missouri. Hey, I like, yeah, I no like them. I've been talking over, about them yeah. for a while. You feel me? And I feel like in this game right here, you got to be careful with a, with a Missouri team. Um, it helps us that it's at least home. So I like that, but um, you got to be careful with them, you know, take care of business this week. It's going to be a, a, a real tough, opponent that we're going against this week it might get banged up a little bit and this helps missouri man having that week off too man i mean everything is uh lining up right for missouri but at the end of the day can they get the job done and kind of keep up with the the caliber of players that georgia has i just don't know i don't know but i like it though you're right no charles is great like, man we appreciate you coming on and 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 being not only uh enthusiastic about your team but also realistic about things and knowing because some people just can say i don't care georgia's no good <laughs> listen do that at your own <laughs> own own peril you know what i'm saying there's a reason old rick flair used to say to be the man you got to beat the man you know so that and hey that's what missouri's gonna try to do but charles we appreciate you man we're gonna appreciate let andy you. and a couple other guys get on here thank thank you for coming on man Appreciate Salute you. to y'all. Respect. I stay in tune with y'all. I'm going to stay in tune with y'all. Thank you. And I'm riding with us to the end, but remember that preseason prediction, though. Share to the Mizzou <laughs> faithful over there. All Share right, to man. the Mizzou faithful. Thank you for coming on, Charles. Let's see if Eddie comes on. Eddie, for some reason, your camera's not working, man. I've tried to just add you on there, so I don't know what's going on, Eddie. Uh, but we're going to bring Andy on right here. Hi. Andy, how's what's it going, up? my man? Good. How's it going? Um, how you like that Arizona hat? Screw the Phillies. Man, crazy, huh? Man, That's I, well, I didn't see that happening. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't either, but I'm glad it did. I as sad as I was when the Braves lost. Now I'm like, eh, it's not that bad. Once I saw the Phillies lose, so no okay. Doubt. First thing is, no, Sean. Congratulations on being inducted to the SEC. Um, was it the um, yeah. my legends class? That's Thank all. You, I'm gonna do. If Appreciate anybody, it. if anybody in the SEC deserves it, that's you. Cause Thank come you. on. I mean, there's not many that's done it better than no Sean Moreno. I appreciate it. All um, but um, so I do got a question though. Where um, Blaine was talking about the the spying thing for Michigan. What? It, how do you feel about that? Because you being a player, like I, obviously I played in middle school and high school, and I can't go any further. So you being a player, is that a huge advantage for them? Is this? Is this? You know. A lot Still of talking signals, about Michigan, all the scandal and everything yeah. where they're videotaping the other team's signals and stuff. No, Sean, what do, what's oh. your opinion on that? I mean, I don't really have a a big issue with it because, I mean, it happens. I mean, I feel like 
a lot of the schools probably do it. And at the end of the day, you still got to stop the guys, right? I mean, there's no if you it doesn't matter if you know it, we run to the right side. Like you still got to stop it, right? And a lot of teams have been doing it or do it. Um, so it's not a big issue with me. Um, I'm ready to move past it and say, all right, if they if they are um you know, guilty of doing whatever they did. What's the penalty? You know what I'm saying? I'm ready to move on and just know what the penalty is. Is the suspension? It's a hardball. What, what, what's the deal? So um, I think somebody's getting question. fired for the level they did it. Because when you're, Bro, you're not well, getting here's fired why. for that. Calm down. No, not, oh. not during a game. Obviously, if you're during a game and you're looking over there and you see a people sitting, that's, that's part of the game. Right. But these guys are flying people all over the country buying tickets for people, having them record with their cell phones, the other team signals the entire game, and right. then breaking it down and laminating sheets and looking over there during the game and saying, oh, this is what this is. I mean, I just think it's Bush League at best, yeah. and I think somebody's got to be held accountable for it. You know? Did y'all see the video I don't see that, that happening. Did you see the video that Aaron Murray tweeted where it, it was when they were playing Ohio State? So C.J. Stroud, he comes up, and he looks to the sideline to get a call. And when he looks, they um, they change it. And then the that guy, whatever his name is, Connor or whatever, he was standing beside the D.C. He says something to him, and they make a completely different call, and they change it up. Like, he knew exactly what they were running. I the mean, whole, it, the whole the whole coaching staff turns and, yes. and looks at it. And then once they see the Ohio State signals, they turn to their players, and they start, yes. you know, signaling it up. It's crazy. So, it it's just wild. a bad look. It is It's wild. just a bad look. It makes mm-hmm. you look – Weak, in my opinion, if anything else, like yeah. do we, you, you need that extra advantage. You know what I'm saying to to get that. So, so do you yeah, think it gives them that much of an advantage to know no. all? Of it? You don't think I don't so? Think so? That's okay, say, that's what I want to hear that. from a player if it was that big of a deal. But because yeah, there's this, talk of. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, there's been times, bro, in the game where one of the linemen is like, "Bro, we're going to the right. We're going to the right. We're running right here." We run right there. They ain't stopping it. They know it's coming. You know what I mean? Or short, short, uh, short down the distance. They know the run's coming, right? It's it's the same thing to me. But I see what you're saying, though, Blaine. It is a little bit bush league, a little bit whack. But yeah. just to the level that they did, they is. spent money on this. They spent right, thousands right. and thousands <laughs> of dollars buying tickets and people's hotel rooms and still no and- chip. Yeah, yeah, it's I, just ridiculous. I saw they were uh, going to scout Georgia five games this year or something like that, or scout Georgia five games. So, yeah, it's yeah they were looking at, at the postseason, I guess. And, we're about to get yeah. to Eddie, but real quick, Andy, we'll I want to tell you the, most, the funniest thing I saw all day was a meme that said uh, it was a picture of Jimbo Fisher, and it says, when you find out that Michigan didn't scout your game. <laughs> I saw, I saw really you tweeted that. That was great. Oh, I saw he just looked all sad. Yeah, no, it's – You don't have well, to that guy. Thanks for hopping on, uh, Andy. We got to get Eddie in here, and then we got CT. Appreciate you, Eddie. Yeah. See ya. Thanks, man. All right, here we go. We got Eddie hopping in. Eddie, how you doing, man? On Hate yeah. Week here. Yeah, sorry, boys. I'm working with a new camera here. It's a little bit better, and I had a little trouble there. Sorry, Blaine, but uh, no worries. I'm here man. I now. I just knew it was blank right there, but but you yeah. sound good, yeah. looking good. How you doing, man? Good, good, good. No, Sean. Uh, I got two questions for you before I get to the game this weekend. So I want to go back to 2007. Okay. And I want to know two things from you. One, was the Gator Stomp something from Mark Richt, or was that totally spontaneous when you guys ran on the field and danced around like idiots, which I just love to this day, okay? And two, I don't think there was review back then. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think in 2007 there was review, okay? If they review that play, and I think you scored, but that is the point. I think they re- did review it. They uh, well, I don't think they reviewed it like they do now. But if they review that play where you scored and they overturn it, and they don't give us a touchdown, mm. is that a loss? Those two questions for you, my hold, friend. Hold on, before you answer that question, though, Sean, production came prepared for this situation. Uh, so enjoy this from back from back of that. Marino up over the top. Did he break the plane? Yes. Georgia touchdown. And here comes the entire team. Watch this for excessive celebration. We may have 15 hankies in the air on this one. I can't believe this. This was planned. This was absolutely planned. Mark Rick decided that he is going to try to fire his team up. He's tired of Florida having the psychological advantage. He's willing to give up the penalty. 
So uh, the whole team comes out on the field. That was the call. They said, oh, this is a planned thing. So no, Sean, answer his question. Did it come from Mark Rick? Did it come from the team or where did it get started? No, good questions. Um, What's going on, Eddie? Chilling. Um, so it was a plan to score and whenever whoever scored to celebrate. So that was planned, right? But the plan was for whoever scored would get up and take pictures of the of the other people, like the offense. So I, since I scored first, I was gonna get up with the ball, use it as a prop, take pictures of the defense of the offense. So I don't know who who it was on the sideline game day or whatever the case may be, and said, "Yo, let's all run out," because I didn't even know. <laughs> so I don't know who it was, but I love that they did that, man. So it, it surprised me. So that the running out on the field wasn't planned. I don't think I that think was spontaneous. On, that was yeah. spontaneous. Someone on yeah. the field was just like, "Bro, okay. let's go, let's go." And I was yeah. like, Yo, I, don't, I don't think Rick had a problem with it. I think Rick nah. did. Did Rick kind of – is it my understanding that Rick told y'all, though, kind of before the game, not necessarily that, but, hey, he wanted y'all to do something to get that – to get to have that edge, to have that fun. I've, I've yeah. heard things alluded to that before the before the game. Yeah, it wasn't before – right before the game. It was the week leading up to the game. Yeah. So, like, yeah. that Monday, Tuesday, you know, practice. So, he was talking about it then, saying that if we don't get a penalty, if someone doesn't get a penalty on the first score, we all will be running for, for – for every week we're gonna be running for months. So um that was that was pretty evil awesome, man. evil Mark Rick, huh? Evil yeah, Mark he Rick. was pissed at that point. He was ready to go. And I like it, man. We need that fiery Rick, baby. Mm -hmm. um, speaking what of about part two? Fire, hold what on real quick. Part two? Part Welcome two in was, TK. Uh, <laughs> what up, T? How y'all gentlemen doing? How y'all you know, chilling, B chilling. Hold on, Eddie. What was the second one though? Damn, I forgot, coach. If, 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 if it was review, review you, oh, and it, you don't score. Yeah. That's tough. Uh, uh, if we don't score there, we're the ball probably goes back to like the fifty. Something wild. The ball goes back so far is unbelievable. Um, and it probably it probably changed the whole trajectory of that it does. entire it, football game. It does because right? then yeah, yeah, then it's first and fifty, <laughs> and you know we still got to score. It, it does change a lot. It might even change the momentum because we don't have yeah. that. Everyone has to get off the field. You know we're kind of pissed off that we don't score. Um, so I'm just, you know, happy that we just that's crazy. Well, can I can I jump in real quick? I know Tavares just came on about this week's game before I, you let me go, Blaine. Is that OK? And, yeah. And then we then we're getting Chris real quick. So, yeah. So I just want to ask you guys. So obviously we'd all rather have Brock Bowers than not. I mean, that's a given. The yak is the is the huge thing there. But I, from what I've watched this year, the 12 personnel has not been a huge part of this offense. It's been there a little bit, but it's really been 11. Honestly, so I don't see much changing going forward. Now, the tight ends you got behind Brock Bowers are certainly not Brock Bowers, but I don't really see much changing. And and to go back to the what Missouri guy Charles I think was saying, you know, huge loss with 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 Brock going down. I don't see it that way. I mean, yes, we'd all rather have Brock, but my goodness, we're just loaded across the board, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's going to be a huge loss. And I think Oscar Delp step, steps up. Lawson Lucky is healthy finally. And the other thing Charles left out is that we're finally getting healthy on the defense. Okay. We've had injuries across the board. Javon Bullard's been limited. There's been injuries all over the place. And we're getting Amarius Mims back this week. I just I just don't see Florida hanging with us for 60 minutes, guys. I am not worried at all about this game. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now, Eddie, Eddie is not worried at all there, TK. How are you feeling about it? No, I mean, I, I feel very, very similar. Um, Coach Bobo's been in, in offenses where he's had to perform without his best players often, in a Todd Gurley and an A.J. Green, um, and he's got it done often. And I personally think that there's a lot more around this unit um, than there was around those those guys. You know, the, I think the receiver unit is, is, a, is a group that can get it done. Um, with with anybody that's out there, you see Marcus Roseme and Jack Saint have a really good year. Um, Ra Ra and Dom have both probably had their two best um, games. Um, and then Lad, you know, we're, we you, you mentioned injuries. We're getting him back. He's finally back to to, to being Lad. So um, you know, excited about that. So I don't see. I don't foresee just like you, Eddie. I don't foresee too much of a drop off with. Um, with Brock being gone because in Bo in coach Bobo's offense, it's kind of, it's kind of plug and play. Once you learn what to do, where to do it, you can 
go 12 and 11 and do a lot of the same things. So uh, it's um it's a unique offense, and um I think that you know we got the players to to put in those positions to shine. So not worried. I'm right there with you, Eddie. No PTSD then, boys. No no PTSD. Uh, they ain't worried about PTSD. I mean, it was, yeah, yeah. They're well, trying Florida to make sure was, they didn't get no CTE. <laughs> yeah, well, I know, but I mean, Florida was a house of horrors for us for years, boy. It was really difficult for us as fans. I know it was for y'all as players too, but and I don't know. It, it, answer me if I'm wrong about this. Was was that something that got in y'all's head, no, Sean, when y'all played Florida, like? something bad would happen and you'd be like, oh gosh, here we go. Or is that just totally not in your mindset at all as a player? It's just, we got to focus on what we're doing here. Yeah. You got to focus, man. And I, you know, I only played Florida twice. That first time we played them, smacked them boys. You know what I mean? We handled business. Second time they, you know, they got the upper edge on us. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I don't know what that third game would have been like, you know what I mean? But we, we know this is going to be a, a physical game. This is going to be a game that, like I said earlier, it doesn't matter what the records are. The guys are going to come out to play. And this can put you back on the, on the map if you're a Florida team. You know what I mean? So um, I don't think the guys are going to take Florida for granted and um, take them lightly at all. I think they're going to go out there and just, you know, get it done. Thanks, Eddie. I appreciate it, man. We're going to get Chris Eddie. on here. I'll ask you. All right. Eddie. Thanks, Eddie. Here, here's Chris. CT. Chris CT. Taylor. How you <laughs> you're muted, Chris. You're like, wait a minute, let me see how that dude is. Uh -huh. Chris, you muted. He knows. I'm trying, he like, shit. Yeah. I'm trying to get it. Can't unmute you. Like, you muted. You muted. Oh, he's off. Oh, boy. Oh, he gonna, there, he goes, get it right. there goes Chris. He's off. All right, guys. Well, we got to get to – welcome in, TK. How you doing, my man? Man, good. Had a little birthday party to go to. Just uh, I'm back. I'm back now. Here now. Got to take care, but take care of business with the birthday parties. You know what I'm saying? It's it's all good. It's all good. I I had the uh, the pumpkin fest little little trunk or treat at the church before this. So we had the kids out there. Had one Ninja Turtle. Uh, had Darth Vader going on there. Had Mickey Mouse on the younger one. So we were we were covering all of them, all the bases. You know what I'm saying? Well, so uh, well, I came in this bit looking like a pumpkin. Yeah. I don't even I don't even have to ask what Callan's going to be. I, it's probably this right here. Got a little Spider Man. You know what? Today we got a little Ninja Turtle. Uh, we got a little Raphael costume, but oh. hey, we'll, we'll probably just be Raphael around the house. He'll, he'll probably still want to be Spider Man. Okay. Yeah, Spider Man's close to that man's heart now. Uh, now we're gonna welcome in CT. CT, how you doing, hey, man? Sorry about that. No oh, good. No uh, problem. I just uh, I just wanted to pop on and say uh, say I was glad to see Charles. I missed most of his time on 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 uh, on the show, but we've been you know back and forth this uh, this week, and he's good people. So, yeah. oh, yeah, some good yeah. points. Make some real good points. So, you're going to be hosting a tailgate he's coming to, right? He's going to come to the say, tailgate. I had to get up here and, and be, you know, honor my word and say, we, we got to link up, uh, link up this, this, uh, next week. So, we'll, we'll definitely connect and, and, uh, look forward to, for, to some chatter. But I, you know, I, I was listening to Eddie and I, I and TK, I, I agree. I, I feel good. What I feel the best about is that when we, you know, Brock, Brock after the catch is one thing, but Brock before the catch was often wide open. And I'm hoping as an untrained eye that that's because Mike Bobo is scheming up something and he can just pl plug somebody else in there and, 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 you know, get another guy that wide open. Um, now, is anybody going to, you know, break tackles like Brock? No, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take, you know, what another guy can produce if he's catching the ball and there's not a guy, you know, within four or five yards of him. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, that's, that's a great point. That's a great point. No, Sean, do you think I'm, I'm laughing at the comments cause they're laughing. They're talking about TK sound quality while you're talking to your rear CT, but, uh, but no, Sean, do you that's think it's good. when, How's that when you, that's better. That's a little better to me. You got to turn maybe turn that volume up just a little bit. Uh, but no, Sean, do you think that, do you think that that's the case that Bobo is just because that's a good point? I mean, even with all the attention that Brock Bowers garnered, a lot of times he was running wide open across the field at different times. Is that just because his athleticism, or do you think it's because um, I think it's because Bobo's just scheming people wide open? 
Man, it is crazy that you see him streaking across the field wide open. You're like, bro, how don't you have two people on this guy? That makes no sense. That never makes any sense to me. So I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's a little bit of Bobo scheming him to get him in positions to at least be maybe one-on-one with a linebacker, one-on-one with a safety, right? Um, And the rest of it is him getting open and breaking a a linebacker off and getting wide open and then making it – um, work after the catch, right? So sure. I think yeah, it's I a mean, little bit of both. I feel to like be fair, to be fair, you have to if you're a defense coordinator, you have to honor Brock differently than you would have to honor anybody else on the field. You know, yeah, you, you you can't just plug Oscar in there and think, oh, they're going to treat Oscar the same way that they do. Right. So that makes sense. Matt yeah, Pill but- says you always make good points there. CT says you always yes. make good points. So you got a fan and Matt Peel there. He's a, a brother in law, so he he's he's got to say it. <laughs> I, hey, I'm inviting. I'm inviting my friends to the show. I'm just trying to. Just trying to go know, that's forward. great. That's fantastic. <laughs> we we like appreciate style, it, man. CT. We're gonna uh, we're right, gonna get Unc on here next. We appreciate you coming in, Hi, CT. Good to see you guys. See you, man. So here comes Unc, Alex Page. Gentlemen, Alex, gentlemen, gentlemen, how are y'all? I know you got thoughts on everything. So tell tell me everything, as No Sean says. Uh, no, yeah. I, I don't have much to say. I just I just kind of want to quickly piggyback off of off of CT's uh, comment about Bobo scheming up Bowers. If the season goes the way everyone wants it to go, and obviously everyone, meaning every, everyone wants it to go, meaning they win another title, and obviously Bobo would be the OC, does does that finally get everyone, the Bulldog Nation, off of Bobo's back? Because obviously there was one, there was one little comment with you know that was posted within the comments. It's a nice show saying that, you know, Bubba's not a quality OC, but based upon what everyone is saying about how, okay, you know, Brock's been is basically the main threat, yet he still continues to get wide open. So Bubba obviously is doing something right. I mean, if if you if, if everyone on the outside looking in says, okay, Georgia only has one bullet, quote unquote, one bullet in the gun, and you know, and that guy goes off every game, basically. So obviously he's doing something right. So and I know before the season started, you know, everyone was giving Bubba some 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 flack about you know based upon his his quote unquote pass um mm-hmm. but like i said in your opinion if the season goes the way everyone wants it to go does that finally get everyone off of bubbles back dk yeah i mean yeah if we win a natty under 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 uh coach bobo with him calling plays i, I think people have to shut up um mm-hmm. yeah but but i mean i think i think the proof is in the pudding in itself. Like you don't understand how hard it is to get a guy that everybody knows the ball is coming to the ball. And we're, what are we talking about? Him being wide open. That don't just happen magically. It, it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, yes. He's super, super gifted. He's super talented, but he's running the routes that, that he's supposed to run to get open. So it is a scheme. There is a rhyme of reason to what Brock Bowers is doing. Um, you look back, even in that Auburn game, Coach Bobo uses uh Lad McConkey to go in there and grab that, grab that uh the outside line, linebacker and pulls him out of there for a Brock Bowers. So it's not like um it's not like uh Brock's calling plays too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um so 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 yeah, I think to your point, I think if we if we get it done in uh <clears throat> in the natty, yeah, everybody's gotta get off his back for sure. No, that's a great that's a great point. Great question, Unc. We appreciate it, man. We're gonna have to hop on some other topics here. We gotta we gotta right, get, get the run down here. All Thank right, you for it. tuning in as See always, y'all. man. We yeah, appreciate sorry, it. Alex. All right, man. See you, man. No yeah. Sean. No Sean, wanna ask you something real quick. Tell so me. out of all the people we've talked to, we've talked to Eddie, we've talked to C T we talked to Charles, man. <laughs> That's your favorite. Do we Charles. Have, favorite? Do we, I miss Charles. Damn it. Do we not have a do we not have a educated group of football oh, fans man. on here watching? Oh, I mean, that's great. Oh, come on. Yeah. Our, our our watch, our listeners, man, and people that watch this, man, they know they ball. They know what they're talking about. So it's you know, it's awesome having you guys up in here and, and we kind of discuss it and see where everyone's in minds at where everyone's heads at. We can we can debate it here and there, you know what I mean? So I like that. Oh yeah, and uh, we we want you guys to know that we're gonna keep bringing people on each week. So you know, and just grow this thing. Share with your friends. Be a, I should have asked be a them about these receivers, man. man. That's what. I, where Alex at? I, I should have asked him He'll about come these back. receivers right now. Because you know, John get... got upset with me the other day. Yo, bro, stop I did being, get upset stop with being, you. Stop being all all sensitive. All right, I'm I said sen- my backs need to step up. And so do the receivers. What are you talking? About? I did. I did. I disagree. I got upset. Correct. Because I think that we've been playing really well. Like other than other than a, 
drops from Arian on those long balls. I think that everybody's emerging, bro. I think right, that right. Rara had a had a game two games ago that was probably his best game. Dom mm-hmm. coming off a 10 catch game. And it's the right time to for that shit to be happening with you know our mm-hmm. man gone. So mm-hmm. I think I think we're I think we're emerging. And again, we get lad back. So I think right. we're emerging. No, um, and, I, and I agree with you on those things. But but, but, but I, it, I agree with you that I hell yeah, I want to see I get, more. Can I not w- expect more or want more? I want more, bro. I want Listen, more, coach. I'm not I'm not mad at you, but you trying Listen. to make me you trying to make me coach my guys like you coach your guys, man. Get <laughs> off of my guys, B. Here's the standard of like, here's the standard of like Nick Saban, the US military, you know, uh lots of different religions around the world, and then here's no Sean standards. They're even up <laughs> higher up here. Like you have to <laughs> you have to like just Damn. really, really uh do your thing. Now, I will say this. Um, and let's go ahead and do this real quick. We, we're going to go through the, the through the week nine picks and all this kind of thing. So I'm going to throw the graphic up here. We'll lead off with the Georgia Florida, of course, because it's hate week. I put that G right there over my face there, but it is Georgia minus 14 and a half, 48 and a half over under th- uh, 330 CBS. I don't know where Noshan's camera went. Uh, now he's off the screen altogether. He probably hit it and knocked his camera off. <laughs> line so that is how that goes he'll be back on here in just a minute but let's go ahead and preview this one a little bit so obviously we know the narrative we talked about with brock okay we we've talked about all that uh for a little while and you still go out and look at it georgia's offense is top notch in a lot of categories across the sec they're one of the only schools in the country that's in the top uh in the uh top 10 in both um, both offense and defense nationally. And then you've got Florida, who's played really, really well at some times. Their picks have been really high, but their valleys have been – oh, that's a different camera there, no, Sean. <laughs> but their valleys have been really low. So I don't know what's going – do we need to kick in you uh, log back out, dude? No, I'll get it. Okay, cool. He's, he's, he's fixing his camera there. Oh. <laughs> Oh, the I'm gonna remove you till you get it. There it is. All right, you're good. You're good, brother. It's right. Let me let me let me get this thing right. right. Yeah. No. Uh. So my question for you is: All right, you got the highs of the highs with Florida. You, you've got the lows that they showed against Kentucky, um, and of course they showed against Utah. What are your guys' thoughts on this matchup in terms of okay, the spread's 14 and a half. It's a game in Jacksonville. You've played in that environment, all that kind of stuff. Give us give us your thoughts on everything. No, Sean, we'll start with you, then go to TK. Um, yeah, that's about right. I mean, it might get out of hand. I think we can we're easily could just run the score on these boys. Um, I mean, shoot, not too long ago, that boy Ray Davis went off on these boys, right? So hey. We can do that too, running backs. Let's get it, bro. Hey, if we get running, let's you get out there and look, do that look, thing. It's gonna be a few between me and you. You talking about? Let's do that too, running backs. I'm like, hey, let's please do it. I, I, I mean, shoot, it, it can be done. But now nah, I can get out of hand. But 14 is about right. Um, you know, I got them at a 35, 35, 21 kind of game, right? Uh, so it's gonna be a tough one. But at the same time, I think once we get rolling, we can put some points on these boys. Let me show you, but TK, before you answer here, I want to show you the numbers here between Georgia and Florida. One thing Florida is very good at is on third down. This is Florida's defense over here on the left. Third down defense, they have the best or the third best uh, third down defense in the league. And Georgia has the, the best third down defense, but Georgia has the second best third down offense in the league at 57.14. We know who's first, LSU, because ain't nobody stopping LSU. Um, so it kind of strength on strength there. You you've played and as a receiver, you know how important those those third down moments are. Is that something that you think Florida is going to have a lot of confidence in with okay, Brock Bowers it and out? We know Ladd McConkey's now kind of the guy they go to on third down. Is that put more pressure on some of those other guys to step up, particularly on the money down there? Again, like I like I said, I don't think um I don't I don't think it adds adds any pressure. I think it gives guys more opportunities to shine. And then mm-hmm. on the other side of that, like Florida's back end isn't that phenomenal. Um, well, I think I think thus far we played um, better, some better DBs than we're gonna see this weekend. So um, I don't, I don't, I don't foresee us guy, our guys out wide having an issue. I actually see them taking this as a challenge to to shine, bro. Like, like 
you're gonna get your, you're gonna get your shots. I'm sure Bobo. If I know Bobo, he's he's got two or three plays dialed up for a lad McConkey. He's got two or three dialed up for a. He's got everybody's everybody's. You, you're gonna get one. So um, I, I think it's gonna be a special day, a special day out wide. Um, and then when we come back on this show next week, um, my boy gonna be over there like this. Okay. Well, I will say this. I, I will say this for the more, RBs. Bro. I will say this for the RBs. This is the healthiest that Georgia's been at running back all year. Uh, They get Roderick Robbins. They get Roderick Robinson back this week, and they have Kendall Milton. They have Kendall Milton back this week. They got. They got to show me some. Ah, see, he's sensitive still. When he knows damn well that them receivers need to step up too, bro. I mean, I'm not saying they haven't been playing well. What I'm saying is, I I need to see more. it was so much talk about a uh, 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 love it coming into this season. So I much agree. talk about uh, rah rah. I'm like, yo, they about to go crazy. So much talk about uh, Edwards and, and Roderick, all these boys. It, it, it's just not where I would like to see it. That's all I'm Listen, saying. I want but more. I, but, but two, okay. That being said, I think that's a culmination of, of a lot of things. One, there's only one ball and seven receivers. Two, like guys are just getting familiar, just just now getting cooking, especially those two that I was talking about. Mm-hmm. Coach Bobo's got to learn them cats, and then on top of all of that, shit. Who just who accounts for majority of our offense? Nineteen. So now that you don't have a nineteen, I think that you're yeah. gonna see a lot more of those cats. So yeah. listen, 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 bro. Like I said, <laughs> we gonna be all right. We're out, out here. You know what I'm saying? We always hold it down. And Blaine, I don't like third down. I like fourth and sixes touchdowns sixes well i will say uh no sean real quick uh ct wants to know what do you think when cash jones is in the game for georgia he's been used primarily as a receiver when he's in the game uh out of the backfield no i feel like a lot of those backs in that room can get it done when he goes in there he i think he's averaging some high number on on each carry i forget what it is but he's averaging a high number so when he gets in there he takes advantage of his, his opportunities like every guy should um but at the end of the day, you know, I want that one guy to be like, this is my room and everyone else can come after me. But we have some good players in there for sure. I like Cash. I like Cash. What What do you both feel maybe that uh, could be the thing that Florida has the most success with on their side of the ball? Like if you're – if you switched your hat around and you say, okay, hey, now I'm looking from Florida's side, what are some things you think they feel like they can probably take advantage of in in this game based on their personnel you know they got two good backs and Etienne good and backs, Montreal yeah. Johnson I mean what what do you think they feel like they can take advantage of uh I mean looking at them and talking about them I mean they do a lot of a lot of pre-snap stuff pre-snap stuff um to try to mix up the, the defense confuse the defense a little bit so I think I think seeing that a lot early um we we know as Georgia fans about that the infamous wheel route out of the backfield so Obviously, look out for that, Coach Nate. Coach Nate's a guy that'll that'll, you know, go back on and look at some tape and pull some things from some, from, from some years back. So, I think the, um just just uh pre snap adjustments and and staying focused pre snap is something big, um defensively for sure that we got to cue in on. No, Sean. Yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, Blaine, they got two good backs. Um, and surprisingly, and I, I, I listen, I'll be the first to admit. Coming into the season, I didn't think anything about Graham uh, Mertz. Graham bro. Mertz. I'm yeah. like, bro, Mertz. I saw some of his stuff uh, in Wisconsin and stuff like that. I'm like, bro. I, I, I said he was going to be better than uh, Will uh, than uh, Leary, Darren Leary. I did say he was better than him, but I was he like, did. bro, he ain't going to do that that well in the, in the SEC. Feel me? But bro, he he's emerged. I feel like he's playing really, really well. He's putting the ball where he needs to put it. Right. So, um, we we got to watch him. We got to watch him, watch those backs out the backfield, trying to make some some things work. They've been running the ball well, but I don't think they're going to be able to run on on this Georgia defense. Mm-mm. So at the end of the day, uh, fourteen and a half is the spread. Georgia, Florida. Do you think? Do you think Georgia covers in this one? I'm gonna say yeah. Yeah, I do too. I, I gave him. I I think we picked. I think we said the same yeah. score. So mm-hmm. 35, 20, 21 is what I would say. You have so to have I'm, a little bit more than that. That's that's you. You missing the hook there? Yeah, you yeah, only no, fourteen. Just, yeah, so thirty-seven. 
37. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's 30, yeah. <laughs> 20, 20, 20, 20. Damn it. Well, here's a here's another big matchup, one that I'm excited. You can see the ones that we're talking about. Got Georgia, Florida in here, and then we got Tennessee and Kentucky behind me right here. Tennessee, three and a half point favorite on the road at night at Kroger Field. They're mm. coming off a matchup against Alabama where they were had a big lead at half. They squandered it, lost that, a physical game where Jason McClellan just absolutely battered them with 27 carries a lot of those in the second half Kentucky uh, of course coming off that collapse where they were up 14 nothing through about 20 minutes of the game against Mizzou and then just fell apart so what are your guys thoughts on this game uh, and who do you think who do you think wins it why and by how much man hold on what it is a cocktail party oh <laughs> I'm done with you you know I'm sick you gotta get it going there you know someone bring me it Ma, the me meatloaf. <laughs> yes, sir. It is a drink. cocktail party. You heard me? And then let me do this. Happy birthday to my boy D. Allison and Bo Hatchet. But yeah, but yeah, for the cocktail party. Damn, but get, man, but get back into I'm what you jealous. was just talking about. My fault. I, I, I was like, dang, you know, a cocktail. cocktail. <laughs> he said, no, I'm flustered. Don't fall in the ocean. Ah. Uh, oh. Hmm. Hey, no, Sean. What do you? What do you? Uh, what's your thoughts? You think TK? Uh, do you think Tennessee takes down Kentucky on the road? Oh man, Ten- uh, Kentucky man, coming off two two big losses. I mean, you mentioned the Missouri one, of course, the Georgia one. They lost. They're gonna try. They're trying to get back. Um, bye week. Are are coming off a of bye week? They are coming off the bye week. Ooh, oh, like man. this is tough, bro. This is tough because I do like the way that Tennessee is playing. I'm really not sold on Kentucky quite yet. I'm, I'm going Tennessee on this one. I, I don't think I don't think Kentucky gets over the hump. I think uh, you know Joe Milton uh, will go out there and, and get it done with those running backs. I, I'm just not really sold on Kentucky quite yet. Yeah. Uh, do you think it's more than three and a half? Oh, the three and a half piece. It, it, it could be. Yeah. Yeah. Probably like seven, seven to ten. Okay. Yeah, TK, uh, this is a this is a game where Tennessee's passing game was you know good in the first half, but then it returned yeah. to what Tennessee had been in the second half of that Alabama game, and then we know Kentucky hasn't been able to throw the ball well the entire season, which is surprising with those receivers. And Devin Leary was good, you know, ooh, then now he's ooh. not good. I mean, so what is your what are your thoughts on this game and and particularly the two passing attacks for these teams? Yeah. Um... Honestly, just an underwhelming year for both passing attacks, in my opinion. Obviously, Tennessee coming off the um, the, the season they had last year with when Hendon Hooker and, and how explosive that offense was, we know. Um, just underwhelming, in my opinion. Obviously, no Brew McCoy out wide and things like that, but Squirrel Is he White. Back? No, Wasn't uh-uh. he injured? Okay. Uh, he's done, man, for yeah. the year. He's, okay, he's okay, rough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's out. So, obviously, Squirrel White was a guy that, that – um, that you thought would be a burner, trying to taking the top off defenses, but they just don't have. I don't, they just are, they're just not ex- as explosive as they were last year, and um, obviously that shows. Um, defense looks good, but but it ain't there. And then on the other side of that, your guy, um, I'm gonna call him your guy. <laughs> it um, is his guy. Rough. You can go ahead and pin that on me because <laughs> I think everybody everybody thought that, that everybody stop it. Like, stop everybody. No, everyone not wasn't saying that. Okay? <laughs> Most a majority of people around the country thought, hey, this guy was balling before his injury. He's going to come back, be good, but he is not the same dude. That is fair to say. And when he has been right and when he has thrown the ball, TK in the right spot, Kentucky's oh, dropped it. Yeah. Like and that, that's the thing. Yeah, that's why I'm with Notion. Like, I can't I can't give it to him. Even when they came to even when they came to us, like it was just uh wasn't what you thought you were gonna get from a Kentucky team on both sides of the ball. Even that, even that Mark Stoops defense looked a little um, suspect. So I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with um, Tennessee in this one, and I'm gonna go with them to cover for sure. Um, yeah, good, good stuff. I I want to turn up uh, some numbers right here just so everybody sees what uh, Noshan was or what TK was talking about in terms of Tennessee not being as, as explosive. Look right here down at the bottom, guys. This is these are SEC rankings. Tennessee only has 26 plays of 20 yards or more this year. 
for reference, guys, after twelve after their season last year, they had fifty five at the end of the year, so they're way off pace, and they are thirteenth in the SEC right now in explosive plays. So it just not has has not been there uh, offensively for for Tennessee. And then also look at this third down. Uh, rate for Kentucky's defense that is not like Mark Stoops defense they're allowing teams to convert third downs 43.88 percent mm. of the time that is horrible I mean horrible in 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 for reference point Georgia only allows people to convert third downs 23.16 percent of the time which is the best in the conference so more hey. than double I mean it's crazy how they how they go about doing things so yeah I think that and I also do think one more thing Look at the red zone touchdown percentage for Tennessee. That's what got them beat against Alabama. They got in the red zone three times there in the mm. beginning of the game and only came away with field goals. They are dead last in the SEC in touchdown conversion rate at 54.55%. No, Sean, you know as a running back, it gets harder to score down there, but you got to do it, man. Oh, for sure. And that's what I was going to mention, running the, running the ball. I mean, I feel like Kentucky has been running the ball well. Mm. So Kentucky, uh, Tennessee has, has to stop that run, run game. And especially there in, in the red zone, they're going to try to run the ball in. I feel like a lot of the Kentucky's explosive plays have been on the ground, which is kind of crazy. But um, I say if they stop Ray Davis, man, this, it could be a long day for, for, for Kentucky. No doubt. Now watch now watch this all. And I and just so you know, what? I'm admitting my prediction is wrong of, of them being 10-2 and two on the year because I think Tennessee wins this game. But right. now that we've all three picked it, watch them, Devin Leary, go out and throw a, a th oh, 300 yeah. piece on him or something. That can that was, happen. That was a 10 and 2. I don't know if it can. I, I, they'd, you know, have to, they'd have to win out to go 10 and 2 right now. I think so. I'm more disappointed that I didn't see everyone's uh, uh, ratings and, and uh, overall, what is it, uh, rankings. I, I didn't go see to, that. We did it like last year. Indeed. Well, go to the go to the uh, go to the archives on Southeastern fourteen right here on the YouTube, and I did a pre prediction video on everyone. This is before you guys had came over with us to to the great channel yeah, that did is that on purpose because I would have been 14. all over those. Been all, yeah, all over, well, yeah, well, no doubt, no but doubt. Definitely uh, would have been uh, on you talking about Missouri when it not. I'd be like, bro, get off of those. Mm -hmm. I would have been upset. <laughs> this one won't take long to talk about, guys. Uh, but I did want to throw it up real quick. South uh, Carolina is a 14 point underdog on the road at Kyle Field, Texas AM. Yeah. Uh, I know that Max Johnson has had his struggles, but mm. I think against that South Carolina defense that let Graham Mertz throw for 423 yards uh, two weeks ago, I think Max Johnson will get right against the Gamecocks. What are you guys' thoughts? Yeah, I, I mean, I think, I think obviously that's a big part of it. And then, um, you know, I I played golf with my boy Mike Davis from South Carolina a few days ago. We was talking about Spencer Rattler running around for his life. Um, I think that's a big part of it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, like yeah, I was, it's 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 struggle over there for my man and his broke foot. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, I and then no, Sean, I wanted to ask you real quick. Um, the last game that I wanted to touch on is Mississippi State and Auburn. Uh, I know you you like Cadillac Williams over there uh, and how, you know, Hugh Freeze kept him on. They're trying to run the football. They have terrible quarterback play. But Mississippi State just played so well that they got Arkansas's offensive coordinator fired on defense. That's <laughs> They held him to three points. What's your thoughts on this game? Auburn is a six-point favorite at home. Yeah, Arkansas uh, – I think from the beginning I was saying it's gonna have they're gonna have a tough season just because not many weapons. I mean, you look past once you look after past uh Rocket Sanders, it's like all right, who else? You know, uh KJ can't do it by himself. So yeah, you unfortunately think that's it was, why Mississippi State's defense were so good, or do you think they're just playing better now going into this Auburn game? I mean, I, I feel like Mississippi oh no, that was Texas A and their their defense was a little bit better. I don't know. Let me talk real quick about Mississippi, man. Uh, I'm upset with Will Rogers, man. Yeah, he's hurt. He's hurt. He's out. I'm just upset. I mean, Before that, I'm saying, like, uh, I was expecting him to go crazy, man. Like, and he, in a pro style? In the pro style, B. Uh, he kept talking. All he talked about before the season was, man, I'm I'm digging this concept of having play action, of, of turning uh, my back to the defense and letting it rip, and they just didn't do it. Yeah, I just thought it was going to be a little better. But, all right, anyway, sorry. But, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, uh. 
Um, in this game, what are we talking about? Are we talking about uh, Mississippi and Mississippi State, uh, Mississippi think, State um, at Auburn. I don't know. Even though Auburn haven't, they've been out of some games. I mean, they haven't been winning all of them. That they've been in games a lot, and I like the way that they use the quarterbacks differently. They put, <clears throat> excuse me, um, they'll put what's his name in. Uh, Robbie Ashford and Peyton Thorne. Yeah, Robbie Ashford, and, and he can do it a little bit with his legs. They kind of keep people off balance a little bit. Um, this game, I, I, I'm actually going to go Auburn in this game. Um, even though I do like Max, I like the way he's been playing um, and everyone else. I, I just think Auburn gets over the hump on, on this game for some reason. Yeah, what's, nah, what's, nah. The, um, what's the spread on this one? Who who they say it with? It's Auburn, Auburn minus six. Uh, yes, at yes, home, okay. so they're six point favorite, but the over under is only forty three. Uh, so they 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 oh, don't trust point any point. of these offenses to score any points. So yeah, yeah. I it's going to be a rock fight, and I think both of them are good defenses. And well, then the last it, thing, though? who wins it? Who are y'all saying win it? What do you who do you think? Uh, Mississippi thought, State I, or Auburn? TK? Yeah, I got Auburn. We got give me Auburn. Woo! Yeah, I think it's just it's just I don't know if it's built on like an Indian burial burial ground or whatever, but Jordan Hare Stadium is just it's just hard to play in. You know, it's mm. it's a tough place to play. Crazy stuff happens. I think the Auburn Tigers win. But I mentioned Mississippi State's offense. This is the last thing, and we're gonna we're gonna roll out of here. Um, the the Mississippi State defense played so well against Arkansas, limited them to three points that the offensive coordinator got fired. I wanted to ask yeah. you guys about a couple of comments. Just get your off the top reaction on it. Sam Pittman, we all love Sam Pittman. We think he's a great, great guy and all that kind of stuff. Good fit, but it's been a struggle. They've lost six straight games. And here he is asked after uh after the press conference, his press conference on Monday, after firing Dan Enos on Sunday about the fire and all that kind of stuff. And he says he says two things that really caught my eye, and I want to hear what you think. He said, I think coaching has a lot to do with enthusiasm, spirit, wanting to run through a wall for different people. He said, we never, we just never really had that on the offensive side of the ball. So that's one thing he said. And then he said, on the, you know, they've struggled offensive line-wise, and they've been getting sacked a lot and all that kind of stuff. They threw 29 pocket passes against Mississippi State, and he said, hey, we talked about moving the pocket. We did it in practice. We just didn't do it in the game. We just didn't do it. He said we practiced it, but we didn't do it in the game. My question is on those two things, when the offense doesn't have uh, like a juice that seems like they're playing, wanting to run through a wall for a guy, and then also your offensive corner does something in practice but doesn't do it in a game, isn't that ultimately on the head coach? I mean, is that what y'all's thoughts? I mean, yeah. At the end of the day, I, I would think it is. Like he's got the he's got the say so. Um, he's on the headset. Um, you know all of those things. But like, you do expect your OC to run the offense. You do expect him to have some relationships, some continuity, some some fire um, within his offense. So when you're not seeing those things, it, it can get frustrating. Especially, I don't think we ever ran plays in practice that we weren't going to run in the games. So, like, if we were working on something, we were working on it for a reason. It was to implement. So, when you do things like that, um, and you – yeah, I don't know. That's just it's, it's kind of a weird ordeal. But, like, oh, yeah, I don't know. I ain't never been no, to Sean. <laughs> no, Sean, I know – I ain't never been to this I ain't never – I don't know. Well, no, Sean, I was going to ask you. I know at Georgia, Bobo, I mean, he – He's a pretty fiery guy. We've seen him, so I know he got y'all wanting to play and go and do stuff like that as a coordinator. But in the league, you don't have to mention any names or anything, but in the league, did you ever have a guy that maybe is a coordinator that you're just like, I don't know about this guy. Like, I'm not fired up to to play for him. Have you ever been around or or had guys in the league maybe tell you about that scenario? No, not necessarily. I mean, I play for a lot of great coaches. Um, especially in the Peyton Manning times that we were here, um, it was it Peyton was Manning was the OC, yeah. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much, and yeah. love that. Um, but you know what? Yeah, not necessarily OC. I would say that maybe about a, a, a head coach. I ain't gonna lie. Listen, when I went over to Miami after leaving Denver and Coach Philbin, I'm talking about Coach Philbin, but not, good guy, good guy. He was just so old fashioned. I'm talking about we couldn't even bring our phones into the cafeteria because he wanted us to talk like it's freaking remember the Titans. I'm like, wait a minute, bro. Why can't I bring my phone into the cafeteria? This is my time to relax. 
So that that was ridiculous. All right, I couldn't uh, play for Coach Phil, but I was like, man, he's too old for this. That sounds like it's TC Tom Coughlin. Like couldn't do it, bro. Too old. Bro. I'm like, bro, stop it. So, but uh, uh, never had an OC that was was like that. Philbin, Philbin making people think it's still Jim Crow over there and all this guys. Yes, bro, I couldn't believe. It. I said, what? What y'all talking about? <laughs> then he, he didn't allow us to wear the. Sh- all right, so you know, I would go out in the spandies in the spandex. The short Joneses, you know, just regular spandex. And uh <laughs> <laughs> Coach Philbin didn't like that Jones. He'd be telling me to put on the shorts and Jones, so I'll just make them even shorter. So so, so you was I going was out, out there, there with a t-shirt. He was going out there with the Schmeet out. He didn't like seeing the Schmeet. He he ain't want no Schmeet. He ain't want no Schmeetish. But hey, you know, stick. <laughs> he was, you know the spandex hold the Schmeet though. It hold them. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it'd be in place. Yeah. So cool feel with it like that, man. I don't get it. So I would just make it more mad and, and, and then have it like when my shirt's so super long, can't see my shorts. That was OD. I he was out there, he was out there. That's on, that's on going, going all the uh, <laughs> no, <Sean's laughs> skirt running that job. No, Sean's going all uh yeah. Chris Chaser said, let's mention our sponsor. That is Chomps uh, right there. If you want some meat sticks, you go to the description and get Chomps right there. But uh No Sean was going all the uh, Sean Michaels in the attitude era out there on him, like you know, Sean, <laughs> Sean Michaels came out there with a, a big old pair of socks stuffed up to <laughs> drawers one day on live TV. Vince McMahon was mad, he did not like that. Uh, but guys, it has been a fun show. Uh, we've talked a lot about We've talked a lot about the Georgia-Florida rivalry. Um, TK, you kind of came on just a little bit late. Last thing I wanted to ask you real quick is, you've told me a couple of times, but I want you to tell the the people watching, you said you knew a moment when you found out that you hated Florida. Tell us tell us what that moment was when it when it came to your mind that you're like, oh, I hate these. Yeah, so my man, year before, scores on them boys. They go – I wasn't there. Um <laughs> <laughs> they go berserk in the end zone. And then, you know, my freshman year, we get there. Um, you know, so Florida's, you know, they want that get back from year before. And so they put it on us. Um, they really, they, they really put us, put it on us. And they beating us bad. We score late. Um, we kick it off. And two things happened. We kicked it off. That boy Percy caught that thing and he just stood there. He just took off running. I was like, yo, disrespectful. And then, you know, <laughs> then after that, um, you know, game's over. Um, you know, it's in the bag. Florida's got it in the bag, and you know, saving calls a timeout. You know, kind of just rubbing it. Urban, kind of. I'm my fault. Urban, my bad. Urban, Urban calls a timeout. Kind of just rubs it in. Um, and it, and it was like that moment right there. I was just like, you know, I really hate these mo. Like, I really do. So from then on, I've been a Gator hater. So. Good. That, and that that kind of stuff, that kind of stuff, and the the athletes that they played against, things like that. That's why you tune into player section. Uh, that's why we 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 love SEC football because as fans we get to see this and all that kind of stuff. So we greatly appreciate uh, all of you guys uh, tuning in. Chris Taylor wants to ask about eye poking. Yeah, no, Sean, you got anything on the eye poking incident? It's so much dirty stuff going on. That's why I used to gotta get up out of there. I'm out of here. Because, uh-huh. listen, we're gonna be fighting. If I stay no here. doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Uh, but guys, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Hit that like button before you go. Subscribe. Turn on notifications. And make sure to catch us live each Wednesday night at 8:30. Uh, thank you so much. And make sure to check out Chomps. All that good stuff. Um, and we will catch you guys next Wednesday night. Right here on player section for TK No Sean. I'm Blake Gilmore. Absolutely. (laughs) We'll see y'all next time.